and sand can do. <laughs> it is not a pretty sight. And I've got the Polaroids to prove it. I'm pleased to announce that we have a record number of officers on point duty directing aides carrying mosquitoes away from popular resort sites. So rest easy on that score. Now go ahead and have your holiday fun. Oh dear. <laughs> December the 17th and everyone full of Christmas cheer. Bloody Santa ho 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 and at you from shop windows and television full of last minute offers and second rate entertainers singing bloody good King Wenceslas at the special time of 7.30. No money to get the kids a present. Bank card people breathing down your neck. Car repossessed. Job up the spout. You voted informal. I think you've got AIDS. You're certainly not comfortable. Hockey team got fourth. Deke's got fifth. Cricket is being thrashed pointless. You haven't paid a power bill since June. It's bloody hopeless. If I ran the Costigan Commission, I'd name everyone else. I don't know what's the matter with this country, but it's not as good as in the brochure. I am the ghost of Christmas past. And as it happens, of Christmas parties. I'm the one who drinks everything in the cupboard, throws up in the avocado dip, makes a pass of the Labrador, backs you into a corner of the kitchen and bores you witless with stories about the good old days when I ran the country. You can post me to Paris as a remittance man. You can chuck me out of the members' enclosure. You can even live long enough to dance on my grave the way you always said you would. But you'll never get rid of me. I am your political heritage, and I'll haunt you for donkey's years. It now gives me great pleasure. Mr. Cratchit, pay no attention to this person. He is an imposter. It is I, B.A. Santa Claus, who is the ghost of Christmas past, as it is properly defined. I am the conscience of this nation in its current period of errant hedonism and vagus consensus. <laughs> You will never completely get rid of the DLP because we are right. Blessed are the righteous, and we shall inherit the nation's soul when the body has succumbed to the Marxist experiment and its associated diseases. I was a member of the Australian Labour Party, and I have kept it out of office whenever it has been possible to do so. That's working for change from within the system. You kept them out. I kicked them out. I kept them out of office retrospectively. But only because I had justified it prematurely. So, as you can see, Cratchit, it was nothing to do with me. I was completely misunderstood. Oh, no. I intend to go on being completely misunderstood until you come to your senses and uh, re-elect me. Typical. Typical. <laughs> take, take, take. When is somebody going to do something for me for a change? Royo, two things happen every bloody Christmas. First, the whole population takes a month off and stays pissed till Australia Day. And second, we've got the annual Bob Cratchit telethon. Now, the poor little whackers had a Gareth Evans of a year, as per usual, I hope. So dig your hands deep into someone else's pockets and give us a ring. We've got 200 lines here. Wendy, the Cratchits won't be short of a turkey this Christmas. The Liberal Party has phoned in and offered to send in you-know-who. It's already dressed, and John Howard's on standby in case they want stuffing. Give us your buttons and ring in. We want that switchboard full. We're going to thump some Christmas bloody cheer in a Cratchit if I've got to do it myself. Hello, and welcome to Your True Confessions. I'm Teresa O'Reilly from the Practicing Laying Nuns of the Sacred Leading Nose of Jesus. And this week, due to the pre-Christmas rush, the barrel is just oozing with confessions from all over the world. Honestly, I think we'll have to hose it out on Boxing Day. Our first confession is from Mr. Ronald Reagan, care of the Bunker, Washington, America. And boy, has he been telling some whoppers lately. But don't worry, Mr. Reagan, there's still plenty of room up in heaven. And if you want to take everybody with you, well, that's completely up to you. <laughs> this one's from Mr. Hawk. See, it's never too late. He's been writing in all the time now since he realised he isn't perfect. 
<laughs> Sometimes he just tears a page out of his biography and sends that in. I've nearly got the whole set. Oh, and here's one from a Mr. Lionel Murphy. Oh, what a pity. He hasn't got anything to confess. <laughs> Jumping Jehovah's Witnesses, will you look at the time? Well, keep those confessions rolling in. We are closed on Christmas Day, so what the hell? Have a few sins on us. Now, here's a charity that'd move a bloody brick to tears. You'd have to have been asleep not to have been aware of the plight of these poor bastards. They've been all over television like a rash, and they've had a pretty thin time of it. Open the phone lines, Kevin. We'll take donations, goodwill and suggestions from anywhere for the Australian cricket team. <laughs> In the meantime, here's a bit of top-flight Australian entertainment. <laughs> OK, settle down. You know what I dislike? You, you big funnel web. I'm so dumb. Help! I've only got one idea. If I had another idea, it'd be lonely. Ah, oh, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> Dumb, I rip off other comics material after they finished with it. I went to this barbecue. Barbecue? I saw my wife Anna vomiting in the pool. I said, do you want to leave Anna? She said, no thanks, I'll wait till dandy nongs. <laughs> you know what I dislike? I dislike it when you lose your integrity by working for the ABC and then no bastard watched it. You have been a great audience. <laughs> Hello. Do you know, over the years, I have examined thousands of species of living thingies, from great big grrr ones to tiny little scuttle scuttle ones. And I've calculated that if every beastie we've ever filmed performed normal um, evacuations and wee-wees, the whole planet would be four feet deep in poo. <laughs> well, why isn't it? Apparently, you know, there's a whole species of television executive who rolls up all of the droppings and pit-plops and nasties of all the other animals rolls it into great big blobs and screens it on Channel 10. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation is arguably the greatest single force for peace and understanding in the English-speaking world. It is for this reason that the ABC has been chosen, personally, as the venue for the annual Christmas message of hope, faith, and patronising good cheer by Her Gracious Majesty, the Queen OBE. Good evening, objects. <laughs> How nice to see you all grovelling yet again. Only this time, not at the feet of your peculiar little Prime Minister. <laughs> it has been said by my cousin, Kaiser Wilhelm II, <laughs> that there is no charisma without a crown. And we agree with him. <laughs> there are sound reasons for preferring television as the media for these royal memos. The press is, on the whole, repulsive. <laughs> Admittedly, Mr. Murdoch's organs are often, often the only means of finding out who in my family is up whom. <laughs> we must register the strongest protest at the recent behaviour of Mr. Kerry Packer, who is the publisher of the Australian Women's Weekly, and who is therefore our real vice-regal representative. <laughs> he should realize that with this valuable task goes the responsibility of keeping his name out of publications which he does not own. <laughs> and incidentally, if Mr. Costigan continues to pick on our representative in this fashion, we shall withdraw our sponsorship 
from any of his future royal commissions. <laughs> there have been few disappointments this year. Apart from Mrs. Thatcher's fortunate escape during the Brighton bombing outrage. <laughs> We also took pleasure in the news that in tracts of your vast land, which had once been considered useless, you have discovered plutonium. British plutonium, <laughs> which we thought we had lost some years ago. It is our passionate wish that you keep this plutonium in perpetuity, which is about the half-life of the substance. <laughs> However, we must register one cause of dissatisfaction with Australia. This is the first election year in recorded history during which we have not been invited to open some ghastly regional arts complex <laughs> and to prop up the government of the day. We are your history just as you were once a small but cherished part of ours. Where are those dead, departed decades when Australians knew how to curtsy, when the stewardship of Australian affairs rested in the limp, dependable hands of a Prime Minister long gone? <laughs> we are sure that we will meet again. We don't know where, we don't know when. <laughs> but were he here today, we would willingly endure for old time's sake his embarrassing attempts at poetry. <laughs> and we would graciously accept his offer of a very merry Christmas. Dead days I now live through resemble those when I ruled you. Deathly dull the years accrue, it's splendid. Remember when the map was red, and red meant British? At their head, a fairy princess born and bred. Her virtue I defended. I did but see her passing by. Enough to make a grown man cry. I still can't get my trousers dry. How splendid. Those days when I could play my tricks in cricket as in politics, one only through the stuff that sticks. All decent life has ended. Well, I'm glad I'm not alive anymore. That I'm as dead as a ferret. <laughs> Contemporary opinion in Her Majesty's dominion no longer recognizes men of merit. He's glad that he's in heaven to He's glad that he's in heaven to I'm here one has the time to recall How the rosy British belly stretched from Suez to New Delhi Before the natives mastered bat and ball Winds of Amoral and Dover Cairo before the wogs took over And it could be truly said Better off dead than red But he doesn't feel so chuffed Now the Commonwealth is stuffed Oh, I'm glad I'm not alive anymore
just about it from all of us here at Gillesey for 1984. Thanks for being with us on Monday nights and for supporting our attempts to bring some serious journalism to television. <laughs> we said it would be all over by Christmas and it is. But before we go, let's cast our minds back over the exciting events of the year which have made folk memories possible. In the first month of Christmas, Bob Hawke, he gave to me Australia, you bloody beauty. In the second month of Christmas, the government gave to me something unemployment. Australia, you bloody beauty. In the third month of Christmas, Paul Keating gave to me clever cost accountancy. Something unemployment. unemployment. Australia, you bloody beauty. In the fourth month of Christmas, Mr. Peacock gave to me no opposition. Clever, clever cost, cost accounting. Something unemployment. Australia, you bloody beauty. In the fifth month of Christmas, Mick Young gave to me Paddington Bear. No opposition, clever, cost accounting, sustained unemployment, Australia, you bloody beauty. In the sixth month of Christmas, Mr. Sinclair gave to me a strange set of standards, Paddington In the seventh month of Christmas, the High Court gave to me Mr. Justice Murphy. Christmas the PM gave to me quite a lot of crying. Fine cotton ringing, Mr. Justice Murphy, strange set of standards. Month of Christmas, the cricket gave to me comprehensive thrashing, quite a lot of crying, fine cotton ringing, Mr. Justice Murphy's strange set of standards. The answer to this week's quiz question was Bethlehem. The other two were home births. <laughs> Good night. That was the final.